Hey guys, it's me again, Nova, the edgy karate guy, your tech and buddy. Today, we won't be talking about Jin, but I'll bring a discussion about Tekken Lich Dragunov, the Russian Spetsnaz. The reason I'm making this video is because I'm seeing so much controversy and so many wrong takes from so-called Tekken influencers and Tekken personalities when it comes to this guy in Tekken 8. I'd like to contribute to this conversation. The reason they don't see the root of the problem is because people apparently only see frames and rewards in the likes of, oh, plus frames good, minus frames bad. But they do not actually take into account identity and core gameplay to understand where the actual problem lies. So let's talk about identity and core gameplay. What is Dragunov all about and why exactly he's such a menace in Tekken 8? The truth is, it has absolutely nothing to do with Dragunov himself, because Tekken 8 Dragunov core gameplay is still exactly the same. Novelties aside, which pretty much everyone received, the character wasn't subjected to a complete rework like characters such as Jin and Devil Jin did. Jin was even subjected to a physical remodeling, so he would stop moving laterally worse than Marduk for God's sake. Dragunov only gained stuff that complemented his core gameplay and further enhanced it. But he didn't receive anything alien that doesn't belong with him. Actually, he only went under one radical change. He went from the worst wall ender in Tekken 7 to one of the best wall combo potential in the game because he received an amazing, unique wall throw that leads into a tornado extender. And he also received a proper wall ender string. Provided you preserve the tornado extender to be used at the wall, he has one of the strongest wall enders in the game. But this didn't affect his core gameplay at all. In fact, his core gameplay remains pretty much unchanged. People are aiming their guns on Dragunov's head when the problem doesn't lie exactly with Dragunov, but rather the new environment that Dragunov was put to work with. And this new environment is called the brand new cheap damage mechanics in Tekken. Let's talk about Dragunov. Dragunov was, and remains to this day, a heavily fundamental base character. If you have an understanding of Tekken, and your Tekken happens to be great, your Dragunov will be great if you simply learn the character. But the thing about Dragunov is that his gameplay doesn't have much depth, and it's kinda unidimensional, because it all revolves around his foundation. The foundation of Dragunov gameplay design consists of two moves, running two and down two. These moves are intimately tied to each other, like Romeo and Juliet. You could even dare to say your winning prospects with Dragunov were always directly tied to how effectively and how successfully you can time and place these two moves during the match. Every other move from Dragunov merely complemented the existence of running two and down two. But also, what is Dragunov's most defining identitarian trait? His relentless oppression through chunky, single-hitting moves that effectively lock you down in a never-ending plus-frame loop where he's constantly psychologically oppressing you and testing your patience. Minus 6, minus 6, minus 17, minus 6, minus 6, minus 6, minus 17. What you're gonna do? What can you do? Are you man enough to challenge me? Do you have the balls to do it? I can wall splat and murder you any moment if you challenge. Then, he suddenly breaks the paradigm with down to you, arguably the best low or at least top 3 lows in traditional Tekken if you take all its properties pound for pound. 17 damage, high crushing, unreactable approaching low, which is not officially homing, but not even Lily could sidewalk it on Tekken 7 at least. I know you will be able to sidewalk left this move in Tekken 8. But once Dragunov connects this low, he's zero on hit. It's no man's land up to this point. Both Dragunov and the opponent can come out on top once down two hits according to their respective actions. That was Dragunov's identity. He locks you down through oppressive, chunky single hitting moves that were very plus on block. But here's the catch. Despite all this reign of terror Dragunov imposes on you, in traditional Tekken, if you simply hold back, the only damage Dragunov is doing to you is merely psychological. 
He was merely trying to make you crumble under the oppression of plus frames. He could only actually damage you by resorting to his lows, which would mainly be down to you. The others are minus on hit, less damaging and way riskier in attempting it. Once Dragonov landed down to you, the oppression effectively ended. Either the opponent successfully low paired it, ducked and punished it, or he landed it, dealt 17 damage and it's no man's land then. There is where the environment change comes in and the situation starts getting apocalyptical. Tekken 8 Dragon of core gameplay is exactly the same. He will lock you down through these oppressive moves and the new moves he received to serve this exact same purpose. But here's the catch. This time, if you merely decide to hold back to survive his oppressive plus frame onslaught, you will notice that despite the fact you are surviving the onslaught, Tekken 8 Dragonov is now melting your fucking life bar through cheap damage. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it unless you take action. Actions that can, in fact, kill you if you got it wrong. Trying to survive Dragonov's onslaught by merely blocking and not crumbling to the psychological warfare is not sustainable anymore. Your life bar will start to melt right before your eyes. This is the reason Dragonov is a problem in Tekken 8. The cheap damage mechanic latched onto Dragonov like a neodymium magnet. This nigga is literally made for this. If there is no fine tuning, he will necessarily thrive in such an environment by force of necessity. There is no circumventing it. Dragonov will thrive in Tekken 8 simply because Dragonov is Dragonov and remain Dragonov. Even so, he's far from being a completely broken character and I refuse to indulge the theory that he is fundamentally broken in Tekken 8. He just needs proper fine tuning. He doesn't need to be butchered, murdered and nerfed to the ground like people are demanding because unlike clear abominations like Jun, there is an actual counterplay to Dragonov and a very clear counterplay at that. I as a Jin player still have the reactive means to dismantle this version of Dragonov no matter how overpowered he currently is. Even the thing that people cried and complained the most to be nerfed to the ground sneak forward into full crouch down forward one forward loop was not even necessary because there was a clear counterplay against it. You could negate this brain dead loop through so many options. People just point at something and start crying without fully understanding it. When the fact is that sneak forward alone is not what is making Tekken 8 Dragon of a menace. It was just another oppressive weapon in his arsenal that could be dealt with through proper Tekken defense. That doesn't apply to an abomination like Tekken 8 June, for example. There is absolutely no counterplay to this. This is pure, undiluted and intentional unbalancing. This is boss character territory. It's launch Leroy all over again. It's crystal clear Namco wants June to have a massive competitive presence. They went as far as butchering Asuka in order to appeal to Kazama players and make Jun even more seducing and appealing to the entire player base. So the diagnosis is, Dragon of Core gameplay is happily married to Tekken 8 cheap damage environment. What can be done then? There are so many obvious ways to balance Tekken 8 Dragon of, there's not even much room for long discussions. Let's start with running 2. Fact number 1. Everyone can access running moves now because they facilitated the running motion in Tekken 8. Any chimpanzee can now pick Dragonov and do running 2 at will. At the same time, Dragonov retained his old school instant running 2, now being rewarded with a blue spark version of the move with extra damage. So, fact number 2, you are being rewarded further for something you were already expected to do back then. It was a permanent execution demand for instant running 2 to come out. Otherwise, you would screw up and get F2 or FF2. My take is that if anyone can access a facilitated version of running 2, this milk boy running 2 cannot be so powerful and so generous in terms of properties as it currently is. Unless you're a dishonest, disgusting tier whore, Anyone can understand this as logical and reasonable. Dragonov running 2 in itself is an extremely powerful move. It does so much for Dragonov. But even so, you had to earn this power to a degree. 
So the way to balance the current state of affairs is making the Milk Boy running to give the player less rewards. It can keep the counter hit launching property all right, but it must give less damage and it also should not be plus on block. The Milk Boy running to should be zero on block and that is already being generous. Dragonov won't lose anything when throwing this out but he also won't gain anything when it's blocked. Now we have order, now we have sanity, now we have great execution being rewarded and mediocrity not being rewarded, but also not necessarily being punished. If Dragonov keeps on doing what he was always supposed and expected to do, the traditional Ultra Chad instant running queue, he still gets to keep his old school rewards like plus 6 on block and the new extra damage. Just as I was against Jin regular win hook fist launching the opponent on normal hit in Tekken 8. I was completely against that and I was very vocal about it. That it should be reverted even though we already know they won't do it because of the commercial treatment Tekken 8 Jin received. You can call me anything you want, but you can't call me dishonest or inconsistent. The thing is, Jean's regular ring hook fist doesn't give me the generous properties of the electric like the plus 5 on block or the extra damage. It is actually punishable at minus 10 on block and the recovery on whiff is worse. So, Tekken 8 Dragon of Milk Boy running to being zero on block is very, very reasonable, considering it would still be a fast mid counter hit launcher. Most counter hit launching mids of this speed and category are very minus on block, so Dragon of is still getting off easy. And now, the last thing to balance Tekken 8 Dragon of his new greedy low down back 3 plus 4. For starters, it should not be plus 7 on hit. For God's sake, this goes beyond Heihachi levels of greed. Heihachi down back 2 was plus 6 on hit. And Heihachi down back 2 was also very reactable because of the audio cue. Ashi! But what the hell is a dragon of audio cue? <laughs> like, I mean, that's it? Let's be clear here, I'm not against Dragon of having this greedy low. Actually, him having a more viable low to at least attempt comebacks is a nice addition, because Dragon of is a character to establish life leads, and then you work from them. Dragon of was traditionally very, very weak when he had a life deficit on you. So, he having a functional greedy low is a nice addition, but it must not be so broken and overwhelming as it currently is. The solution is making it plus 6 and making it at least 21 or 22 frames of startup. Give the opponent a chance to react to it online, since Dragonov only grunts and therefore doesn't help you with any audio cue. People are complaining so much about second 8 Jin down 2 being supposedly unreactable at 22 frames, let alone a 20 frame low like Tekken 8 Dragon of down back 3 plus 4. If you balance his running 2 as suggested and his down back 3 plus 4 as suggested, there you have it. You have a Dragon of that is still a threat, a fucking powerhouse, but the playing field will be leveled with all the other power crypt abominations that are being seen as underwhelming compared to Dragonov and Dune. Power Crypt abominations such as King, Jack, Feng, Xiaoyu, Lily, Victor, Yoshimitsu, Poe, Ryan, you name it. And I guess that covers everything. I hope I was able to accurately display what is the deal with Tekken 8 Dragonov and why this character doesn't deserve to be butchered. Dragonov is actually paying the price for staying faithful to his identity, whereas other characters such as Kazuya are almost unrecognizable on core gameplay. Who would have guessed Kazuya would be going for another low other than his Hellsweep as his main 50-50 key low? Who would have guessed Kazuya would be going for a Jin-like FF2 Demon Paul as his 50-50 mid option instead of FF3 for example? Such are the times we live in, and I'm done here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm still yet to play Tekken 8, and I'm grateful to my Tekken buddies who made this video possible by providing me footage on request. If you happen to like my Tekken content, please 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 1000 subscribers so this channel can go forward. You know, Harada won't nerf your character if you press the subscribe button. I promise you. <laughs> we'll be seeing each other again. Thank you for watching this video. God bless. With all due respect, Senator, I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation fully, thereby have misunderstood the circumstances. This is not a negotiation. I understand This that. is a I'm mandate. I'm just asking to be heard. It is a mandate. I, under I understand that. I understand that. I lived my life by your mandates. I dedicated my life to your mandates. I only ever did what you asked of me, what you told me to be and trained me to do, and I did it. And I did it well. Yeah, yeah. K.O. 